Aside from Boy Side, I mean, I, I do. I, of course, it's Kalokohan on air because that's the character that we have to, you know, play with when uh, we do our radio show. But of course, you know, off air. Serioso naman ang tao, hindi lang sinis serioso. I've always had, you know, these questions at the back of my head. And it's nice to shed light on them because sometimes you just, you know, have these thoughts and just find your own answers to these questions. So it's always good to discuss these things with people to also get everybody's opinion on these questions. Because even if, of course, we're, we try to be as faithful as we, faithful as we can, we're always going to have these questions at the back of our head. And daming why? Why this? Why that? Why this? Diba? If, if God is good, bakit ganito? Bakit may ganyan? Diba? This podcast is powered by Podcast Network Asia and Podmetrics. Welcome to the Narrow Door, everybody. Come on in. So happy you're here. My name is Sam, and um, we are so excited today. This is, of course, episode number 34. We have a celebrity guest who is very special to me. But before we introduce you to him, let me introduce you to my friends, who you all know very well by now, I think. Brother J. Paul Hernandez is lay preacher at The Feast. Pastor Dennis C. is head pastor at Victory Green Hills. And instructor Harold Resho is instructor at New Heaven and New Earth, Shinshinji Church of Jesus. How are you guys? Looking good. Everyone's looking sharp. (laughs) 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 They're saving it for later because we have a lot of questions to go through today. Yeah. So you know what? I'm I'm really enjoying these um, episodes where we have guests because number one, I think we get to see a side of them that we normally don't see, you know, when they're doing their thing. They're not really, you know, talking about their faith necessarily and all of that. And then um, sometimes we get to ask some questions that I think a lot of people have about the faith. And I think today is what is going to be one of those episodes. So let's get started. Let me introduce you to our guest today. The world knows him as half Indian, half mango. I'm sorry. I think that's his Instagram bio. My bad. You know him as one of the three boys in the hugely popular radio show, Boys Night Out. But to me, he will always be my first radio partner. We're so happy to have Sam YG on the show. Hey, Sam. Hey, guys. Ayan. <laughs> you know, I've, I've uh, guessed it on a few podcasts and shows, but dito not ako. Why? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Parang, I don't know. I don't know why, but... I uh, know, but it's it's interesting. It's my first time to uh, you know be on a podcast like this talking about you know religion and faith. So it's a bit different. Uh, maybe that's why I'm not I'm uh, a bit nervous because I'm not used to stuff like this. No, that's fine. You know what? It's actually um, it's something that a lot of our guests say. They're like, you know, I've never really talked about my faith. I haven't talked about religion in mm-hmm. any public platform, and I think that's great. Um, there's no need to be nervous, though, because you're here to ask questions about the faith, right? Um, That's true. Yeah, yeah. Sam, how are you doing in the pandemic? You seem so busy still. Well, the pandemic has, of course, you know, I, I do a lot of uh, events like you with Dubai, host a lot of events left and right. But for the pandemic, a lot of events have shifted to online. So I do a lot of uh, online events. I do a podcast as well about love. And then we have Boys Night Out, Monday to Thursdays. That's happening uh, 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. And then we broadcast it on, on radio. So a lot of things are still happening left and right and uh, surviving. Yeah. No, you're. I don't think you're surviving. You're thriving. Uh, you know, you're about thriving. Thriving. Oh, My oh. five, six business. <laughs> you know, and rice cookers and uh, payongs and all that. <laughs> Well, yeah. Um, so we'll talk about your podcast. I've listened to it yesterday. You can tell us about, you know, what it's about. Your co-host, you're doing it with Chacha, right? Right, right. Yes, yes. And it's about love. Hilarious. Very interesting. Thank um, you, thank you. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about your faith. Because when I asked you, when I invited you over to the podcast, I asked you like, okay, where are you in the faith? Sam and I have known each other for a very long time, but we've never talked about our faith life or religion. So, yeah, tell us where you are. Well, I am uh, a Catholic, but I guess uh, technically, I said technically just because uh, I haven't been exactly practicing uh, for the past probably two years. I haven't been going to Mass, you know, which is bad. But, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, I still uh, do my prayers in the morning and at night, but yeah, I haven't been going to, to Mass per se. Yeah. So, technically, yes, but practicing not exactly 
Yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is a no judgment zone. So like, you don't have to, you know, feel bad or whatever. Like, because I, you know, I, I mean, most of my life, I didn't even have a relationship with God. This is a fairly new thing to me as well. So I really feel like I'm in no position to judge, but I'm just very interested in everyone's faith journey. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. Because yeah. bye bye, diba? to each his own. Everybody has yeah. their own, you know, uh, thing. There are people who say, I'm not religious, I'm uh, spiritual. Spiritual. Ah, ganyan, diba? <laughs> Pang cheeks. <laughs> mga pick-up lines, diba? <laughs> mga style ng mga tao. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's where Sam is in the faith. He is technically a Catholic, but not really practicing, but still, you know, praying and all that stuff. And um, I asked you, Sam, like, you know, you can bring whatever questions you have about our faith, God, Bible, whatever, because we have a very knowledgeable panel and we have been having some really interesting conversations with them. So let's get to it then. I have the list of your questions. Do you want me to just kind of like throw them around and see where it goes? Sure, sure, yeah, fire away. Yeah. All right, all right. Sam, relax, just enjoy and enjoy. Okay, okay, okay. Mayroon naman confess na ngayon. Nandito naman kami. And then mamaya na yung confession, mga... May konti, alam mo naman. Marami tayong ganyan. Okay. Um, so I have Sam's list of questions here. And the first one is actually a very popular one. I feel like, you know... People have asked us on the show already. We've had our own discussion on this already. Um, Sam wants to know, why did God create suffering and pain? Why are some people born with better lives than others? Mm -hmm. Why did you think of this question, by the way? Because sometimes it makes me wonder, you know, when, when uh, Dubai, of course, we're, I feel like I'm very privileged uh, to be enjoying this kind of life, to be uh, enjoying the luxuries, you know, I have here and there. But you see people, let's say, on the street, without food, um, people have no homes, and it makes you wonder, uh, why is it like that? Why why didn't, you know, God just create everybody equal so that, you know, everybody gets to enjoy life or um, have the same privileges? Yeah. Go, J-Paul. Go, go, go. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'll go ahead. Um, Miss Universe question, but thank you, Sam. They are really, honestly, to to be very practical and 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 frank, we are all created in equal dignity. You, it means as a human, we're all valuable. But I guess the uh, I love this quote by Gregory the Great, uh, Saint Gregory the Great. He's a pope. No friend, ko yan. Oh. Oh, how weak are you? Oh, oh. <laughs> so Greg, um, Greg, you can text lang oh. That the what the purpose of 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 wealth is to administer to those who need it. I really believe that there are people with appropriated grace that that you are more susceptible to being rich or wealthy or in a, in your words, Sam, uh, privileged. And and our goal is really to help each other. Have better lives. Just for example, Sam, um, Sam's, you, you are amazing with your talent. But somewhere along the way, there was somebody who gave you a break. He you gave you your kindness. You said, "I think Naku, you're." Nakuha dami ng break, nakapag break sa akin. Si Sam kailala yung isa. Hindi eh. <laughs> dalawa kailala mo Sam, ha? Dami ng break sa akin. No? Oh, anyway, as we go, sorry, yeah. Sam, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No okay. problem. No problem. Jeho, Jeho. No problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so along the way, yeah, you know, we get yeah, our breaks. Of course, I'm helps you lucky I have my break. Yeah, oh. I, I believe you know um, that is our goal. The more, the more you have, the more we're capable of helping others. So, as Christians, that's our our goal. Mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, uh, we are the body of Christ. Yung, the hands and the feet, we help each other have better lives. So sometimes it's not always finances, it's not always in, in that area, but somehow we, we help. Our goal is to help each other have better lives. Sam, what's the meaning of Jai Ho? Um, you are my destiny. No. <laughs> no, I, it means <laughs> pa, parang ano eh, my, uh, my forever love. Something like is that. it really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wow, so much meaning packed into like two syllables. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, okay. You know what? I get it. Because I think, and, you know, when um, Sam was elaborating on the question, I was also thinking to myself, like, oh my goodness, I don't think I've ever heard Sam talk like this. <laughs> no, you know? Because, you know, like, para, okay. Sorry, can I ask a follow up question? Sure. Yeah. It's open discussion, naman, diba? So, yeah, like, like uh, J. Paul said, no. Um, it's, you know, if, if our goal is to help each other out. So, how about those na not as privileged? In which aspect are they supposed to help? Confusing it. Okay, uh, we're yeah. born to help. Okay, sige. so of course you're privileged and we're born to help. So let's help each other out. So you 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 help people, pero let's say for those who are not as privileged, are they just supposed to be in the receiving end? I guess, you know, um, for example, uh, I, I love this. Uh, so Boya Bunda wrote a foreword for one of my books. And, and, and one of the things he said that he was born really poor and there was mm-hmm. a time wala, wala talaga siya. And, and one time that there were prostitutes who allowed him to sleep. Um, para, para may matulugan siya. Mm-hmm. And he was surprised that those who don't have were actually the kindest and gave him heart. So, so there you are never too poor to be a blessing because you have to put your mindset that, that God is a, an abundant God, that you are never in a defeated stature, that mm-hmm. you are a cap- capacity to win. For example, as a radio host, you don't need to be rich to be successful. You just not need to have a character. May, may o, struggling, skill. parang ako, struggling artist, parang ako. <laughs> Sambat ganun, hindi pa ako sumisikat na laos na ako. <laughs> hindi, alam ni Sam yan eh, diba? I don't, 2005, I'm trying to get famous until now, it's 2020, I'm still not famous, man. Oh, you're too modest. Yeah. I think I think what Brother J. Paul is saying, because I think, like for us, we think that maybe the, the main way we can be of help to other people is through material things. Right, yes. but mm-hmm. I think you know a big in the bigger picture, like we can be of help to others in other ways. But our focus, I think, is on like money or you know the more privilege. often than not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I'm getting from Brother J. Paul. Yep, it's it's the kindness. For example, every time, Deba, we go to uh, uh, outreach, we go home happier. Because because we allowed ourselves to help someone, and that's the gift that the poor or the uh, the unprivileged uh, get to give us. Mm-hmm. Like when you have French yeah, fries, right? Uh, Dalawang peraso na yung French fries. So, o offer mo pa, wag mo French fries. Oh, it's, but it's just a courtesy offer. Alam mo naman, saan hindi ko mo na French fries sa akin. Pero <laughs> offer mo. Well, well, kain ka, kain ka. Diba, you know, it's a Pinoy thing eh. You go, go into the house, oh, tara, tara, kain, kain. Pero dalawang french fries yun, syempre, you're expecting, hindi naman kakain to. Pero pag kain, bye. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Anyway. Who wants to go next? Who wants to try this? Well, ako, I think in scripture naman, diba, like what Sam was saying, may, may mga poor people that, that were give were given as examples to us of generosity. First would be the yung widow's might, diba? Yung may two pennies na lang siya, yun yung nilagay niya sa offering. Tapos yun pa yung in honor ni Lord. Sabi niya, tingnan niyo itong mga mayaman, nagbigay ng 500 pesos. Ito, mahirap, binigay niya na lahat, diba? And I think uh, the kingdom of God belongs to uh, people like that, right? And then another one was when Paul was in the city of Corinth, tapos sabi ng mga may hirap sa Corinth, and Paul described them as in 2 Corinthians 8 2, for in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. You know, the, the Corinthian church was saying, Alam, alam namin mahirap kami. You know, we're poor, but please accept this money. I know we're poor. I know we don't know where we're going to get our food tomorrow, but please accept this money because we want to give to the cause of the kingdom of God. And we've simplified our lives so that we can actually move in generosity. So wala nga talaga, it's not really in the status of your financial status. If you're going to be generous and help out and make a difference in the world, it's it's the posture, it's the spirit that we have that would help us no, achieve that. Mm. Oh, widows might? I've never heard that before. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I love it. Love it. 
Okay, Instructor Harold, go. Um, I agree with my brothers here, but if I just can uh, add something, because in this world, there are things that are unseen and there are things that are seen. And usually the, the wealth that we're talking about are physical things, but there are also things that are unseen, which we can, um, if we are um, unprivileged, let's say in the, in the world and we are um, financially challenged, we can still give something to others like kindness, love, consideration. And these are the things that we can consider that we can give them because this is what the Bible teaches us. Um, it teaches us how to be a good person and even how to um, love our neighbors just like how we love ourselves. So these are simple things that um, even those kind of people can give to others. Right. Okay. What do you think, Sam? Like, I mean, you know, having heard all of that, like, where are you? Well, yeah, I understand, of course, there's a uh, more to material, you know, wealth. And, you know, of course, there's uh, a lot of other things in, in to consider. But, yeah, sometimes, I, I honestly, it still makes me wonder. Mm -hmm. diba, parang, why not? Why, why God didn't just create everyone, you know, on equal footing? I, Sam, I guess... Siguro, I guess a question that you can ask yourself is, why are you thinking about these things? That maybe no. you have a platform oh. to help others. Maybe you're not the most practicing Christian, but there is something inside you that is meant to help. Because a lot, honestly, a lot of people don't reflect about these things. There's a reason why you're reflecting about these things. Maybe but, so. Yeah. Maybe so. Yeah. But I mean, this is like a quintessential question, I think, when someone comes to the faith and mm -hmm. they understand God to be, you know, good and he's supposed to be like goodness itself and love itself. So how come, you know, there are all these things that it doesn't really make sense. Oh, but it's not equal, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah, I um, think we go back to the discussion of free will, right? We have choices. We have choices that we have to make. Right? I think, Sam, you being a good host, you made a choice to become better at your craft. And that's why people pay you. Uh, your value is higher than the others because of a choice you made in your life. That I'm going to be good at this and they're going to pay me more, right? Mas mahal talin others... fini Samo. Ako 2 five lang. 4,000 oh, si Samo. When he said good host, I basically assumed he was talking to me. Right? You're talking to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sabi ko nga, sabi ko nga. Kung sino mas mura sa inyo, kukunin ko sa, ana, sa kasal ng anak ko. Kung 2-5 ka lang, Sam YG, ikaw na. Sorry ha, ano ako ngayon eh? Swab test. What are you doing? What? What? Are you... Halloween kasi, so may costume ako. I forgot to wear it. Swab ako ngayon, swab. You're an... Oh. I was like... I was like is he supposed to be a baby or no? I think he's supposed to be a baby. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, that? sorry, I'm in the Halloween mood today. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Are, did you make that yourself? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's yeah, malaki din kita mo, grabe. Oh, kasi yung props ko, alam mo na, diba? Ang tainong ng mga tao. Eh. Effort, oh. eh, no? Effort kung oh, effort. effort. Yeah. Instructor Harold, I think you were trying to say something earlier. Sorry. Uh, yes, so uh, the way we understand it, the Bible, we know that God is a fair and just God. So the injust the injustice that we can see in this world, um, this is coming from Satan because this is not the will of God for us. Um, and what's good about God is that he can turn this into something that will show his glory. For example, um, in the Old Testament, the Israelites, his chosen people were enslaved in Egypt, but after 400 years, they will they were able to come out with great possession or even Jesus Christ himself. Um, he's the son of God. And yet when he was born in this world, he, he grew up in, uh, from a poor family. So I think more than the social status, what's more important for God is for us to know his word and understand it. And it's because we, um, um, our goal is not to be deceived by the enemy because the enemy He's the, the source of this um, deception in the world. Um, that's why we believe on things that actually are not coming from God. Even I think the original question uh, a while ago is about the, the suffering and pain. Is it coming from God? We believe that it's not coming from God because God is good. And 
the Bible tells us that it's not his will to bring affliction to us. So um, this is really what we can see is the work of the enemy for us to be deceived and believe that this is coming from God. So um, if I can just also add one last that when we make our choices in life, we also have to be careful because sometimes our choices would actually lead us to the suffering and pain that we have in our life right now. Ako yan. You are the jowa dati. Yun nga, wrong choice. Nag-suffer ako. Ano? Tama. Agree, agree. Tama. Very well said. Brother Harry. Very well said. Uh, legit, legit. Wrong choices will get you hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agree. Sam, have you read the Bible? I mean, like how... Oh, of course! <laughs> Leviticus! My favorite. Oh. The no, Bible. It... Mark. John. <laughs> Peter. Paul, Eric, oh. Eric. Eric. Ano? <laughs> hindi kasi nabili ko galing sa Lazada, hindi ko alam kung baka ano to. Ano ta? Hindi yata original to na ko ko eh. <laughs> Nakasame eh. <laughs> you should be buying the book of, ano, of Pastor D. Uh, which It's one? Oh, you can yeah, there's a promo. Promote, promote natin. Which one? Oh, we have when a lot of sex, books. Why settle for good sex when you can have great sex? Oh, damn! I like, I'm not starting to love this podcast, man. That's a fucking bow. <laughs> Whoa! Language. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. I got carried away. I got carried away. <laughs> Guys, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Whoever said the thing, just be said at that. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's move on to our next question. You wanna? Don't, don't like to talk about uh, no, great sex. Okay, move on. I, I have a professional video kasama si Pastor Dennis dun. Oh, really? Oh. Kasa, siya, siya. Shall we start with the Kama Sutra lecture? Yeah, it's not the kind of sex book that you're thinking about, Sam. Just, you know, a little oh. like disclaimer. Uh, oh, but it's okay. a good, it's a good book. He co-wrote it with his wife. It's it's beautiful. Okay. Let's move on to our next question. And this is a very straightforward question because Sam yeah. wants to know, if you don't believe in God, will you automatically go to hell? Yeah. Yan. Yan. Yeah. Oh, tell oh, us the story behind it. this. Oh, why did you think that? I mean, hell, you, you imagine hell, mainit, walang aircon, di ba? Yun yung mga imagine mo pag hell, eh, di ba? Pakasikip. No, kasi when they show it on TV, of course, these are all, you know, reimagined uh, things. But, you don't want to go there. And you imagine, you know, heaven to be, you know, aircon, nice, massage chairs and all that. But, yeah, so, you know, you don't know. You don't want to go to hell. So, so automatic, man, if you don't believe in God, okay, hell ka na. Hindi ka naniwala sa akin. Hindi ko gusto mo mag-spa. Depende sa anong kasing spa. It's the narrow door. You know it. Oh, I guess, yeah, I guess I should have known to expect this. I know, automatic man. What, what's, the, what's the deal? Yeah, it's a very interesting question, though. Yeah, I, I want to know. I'm sure a lot of people do. Yeah. I'll start. I think, well, for me, and quoting the great uh, Ravi Zacharias, he says, God doesn't send anybody to hell. We oh. make our choice. You know, we make our choice. C.S. Lewis said there are two kinds of people in the world. Those who bend their knee to God and to Him will be done. Or those who refuse to bend their knee to God and God says to them, your will be done. The choice we make for eternity is made by submission of our wills to our God. So God won't violate kasi our free will, eh, Sam. No? And, and the quote that was so powerful, he said, even heaven will be hell to the person who doesn't want to spend eternity with God. Wow. You know, we make our choice. Yeah, we make our choice. It's not, does God send me automatically to hell? It's a choice you're going to make, right? So it's a worldview that you would want to, because we have a worldview. We all have our worldviews. It's what worldview you embrace that would make you believe how you're going to live your life. Right? Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. Anybody want to add to um, that? Yes. So since since the question is that if we do not believe in God, will we will we go to hell? But actually, before believing in God, we must know Him first. And when we know God through the Bible, we know that He is the Creator, 
And when he created things, he used this word. Um, and in the word is actually the life that is giving us. So meaning that the life is coming from God. So therefore, without accepting and believing in God, how can we say that we receive the life coming from him? And this is something that um, is related to our faith. But according to the scripture, faith comes from hearing the message, and that message is the message of Christ. And that's why it's very important for us to always check if we have the proper faith according to God, because if we don't, according to the scripture, we won't be able to receive salvation. And uh, for example, um, let me use um, what happened at the time of first coming. The Israelites are the chosen people of God, and they should be believing in the promise of God, who is Jesus, who is the Messiah. Um, their savior, um, or our savior, if I may say. And when when they did not believe in Jesus, um, that is something that we have to check. And even though there are gentle people, but they were able to believe in Jesus, then we have to now check between among them, uh, or among them, who is actually saved. Is it the Gentile who believe in Jesus, or is it the Israelites who did not believe in Jesus? Ooh. That's deep, man. <laughs> oh. Hindi yung seryoso, talaga? Oh, hindi. Nando pa sa gitna ng explanation, hindi pa umabot sa akin na traffic eh. Hindi na process pa ng brain ko eh. Mga three minutes pa, three minutes. Mga oh, three minutes, maaintindihan ko yan, papi. Sorry, lagi. Oh, Naglagi yung brain ko. Oh, damn, sorry. <laughs> I also have a question, like regarding this question of yours, Sam, right? Like, mm. if you don't believe in God, will you automatically go to hell? But like, do people who don't believe in God, do they believe in hell? Because I feel like those are things oh, that are... Oh, good, good point, good point. Right? Yeah, like, point. Oh. I guess, ang ganda nun tanong, talaga, ito legit, dito joke time, pero ang ganda talaga, kasi, um, I, I, merong book si Pope Francis, actually, uh, a really nice book, it's called the name of God. The, the name of God is mercy, and mm -hmm. he really talks about this. And in our, for us Catholics and as Christians, ang understanding or what Pope Francis explains is that God will do everything to save you. Kasi mahal na mahal kanya. He he will he will find ways to have cracks in your heart to be with him. Parang. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm already a, a father of a... Yeah, go, go ahead, Sam. No, I'm just wondering. About, okay, so there, there's that aspect. So if you have that mindset, okay, God will you know, forgive me naman. So it, people can just keep doing bad things with that mindset. Na, okay, I'll just do this because God will forgive me anyway. Yep. Diba? So in essence, um, if... Of course, we all want to be good people, but even for people who do not so good things, they'll just think about that, you know, yeah. have that mindset now, hey, God will forgive me naman, so I can just do whatever I want. Yep. And I think that's yung, honestly, maraming, I don't know how to say this in English, but maraming sama ng loob yung mga old school Christiano. See, okay. they, would, they would say, diba, Lord, ang tagal ko na nagpapakabay, tapos ito, sa mga ugali, addict, tapos biglang ngayon, oh. diba? Right. And and honestly, status in the end. Yeah, pro prodigal son, yung, yung father, yung, yung the older brother got mad. Mm. Siya, good good kid the whole time. Mm. The younger mm. brother tumating. Oh, party. Ah, well, you know, two things. Number one, God will leave the 99 for that one person that is willing to, to save. And then being with God is the prize. Be accepting God in life is is already the 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 prize of life. Na yung living in His abundance, yung being with Him. Hindi ko siyang explain, but siguro sa um, on um living in a life before, uh, kasi I guess I understand this very much. Mm -hmm. I. I I lived in a uh, promiscuous life before, you know, being being with the ministry, ganyan. Masaya naman eh. Mm. Masaya naman siya. But to, not to hate on, on, on everyone, pero may certain, <laughs> alam mo, mag-react eh. May pleasure yung world 
that is temporary. Like for example, pumarte ka ng sobrang tinde, you, you, you hmm. had a night, a temporary, a casual relationship. May, may yeah. pressure ka ba niya? Uh, one night stand, mga ganyan. No? Oh. Sabihin mo na, okay lang, tayo tayo naman. Kano may, oh. uh, kano, kano, kano. Wala mo na ikinig sa atin eh. So, okay naman siya. But for me, that has, is, it has and is experiencing God, wala talagang kapalit eh. Yung, yung joy that you are with the joy of the Lord 24-7, that you are embracing abundance. Yung, sometimes you don't even have to work hard, but there is just ease in mm. life. There is, there is goodness. And you have to experience it to understand it. So, yeah. But then also we understand that people have a hard time being good because daming temptation eh. But I guess I am coming from that who have un- experienced both worlds and um, there is nothing that can compete with the love of God. That, 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 that yung completion, yeah. that there is uh, every person, I guess Augustine says this, everyone has a God-sized hole in their hearts that only mm. God can fill, that no, no, no alcohol, no gambling, no party. They're all good. They're all mm-hmm. fun. They're money. But there is a space in our heart that only God can fill. So that is my my response. Yeah. Can I add something? Go. I'm sorry. Go, Pastor Pastor Pastor. Go, ahead. Go, go. go ahead, Sam. Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> No, because I was just thinking about that thing that Sam pointed out. Na, you know, if that is the if the if what God is offering us is mercy, and you know, does that does that then give us license to just keep sinning? And I think for me, anyway, my personal experience is the more you live out this faith life, which is you know hard in the beginning, because I think. <clears throat> a faith life to me anyway was a process of like realigning myself to what God um, wants me to be like his original intention for me, his design for me. And I had, I think strayed from that quite a bit. And so to get back on track, like that is the, that is the, that is faith. I think is kind of realigning myself to what God wants. And I think the more you mature in the faith, it kind of shifts in the sense that before maybe you were just maybe thinking of ways, okay, how can I still do this and get away with it? But it kind of shifts into becoming, how do I just keep pleasing God? And so even if the offer is, you know, this mercy, which I think, which I don't think I understand as a human being, um, your desire now becomes to uh, do things that are pleasing to God. You know, are we automatically going to hell if we don't believe in God? I don't think I feel I'm in a position to really say with 100% certainty just because of that mercy. Like, I think the mercy of God is like scandalous. I don't know the mathematics of God's mercy and how it works. I don't know how I, 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 I'm not in a position to say. But I also think that hell is very real. And to believe that, you know, it's not, it's a place that no one goes to. This was kind of like a, a debate in in Catholic circles because of you know this what this one uh, prominent bishop said, but I think it's dangerous to think that nobody goes to hell. I think it's a real place. Does that answer your question? Yeah, major. But I, it's it's still you know I still have that that question at the back of my head. Na, you know, if if for people with that, what if you just have that mindset? The banana. Let me just just do what I want because. Yeah. God is merciful anyway. Yeah. If, if, anybody, if I can just add. Uh-huh. Go, go. I don't know. Um, if I can just add, um, because uh, just like what Sam mentioned, that we need to become mature in, in our life of faith, that we have to go to this direction, which is going towards God. And I believe the same thing, that God would want us to be mature in our faith. And when we do that, when we realize that we did something wrong according to um, that is against God's will, then we we need to correct ourselves. And I know it's hard at first, and it's always hard to to correct ourselves. But um, if we understand the scripture, then it's going to be clear to us that God is actually wanting us to repent. And uh, repenting 
means that we have to go to that direction that will lead us to him. And uh, at the end of the day, we must be thankful because whenever he makes us realize that we're doing something not pleasing to him, he's still giving us the chance. And while we still have the chance, I think we should be able to grab that opportunity and change our lives that will be pleasing to God. Right. It's like your mom, Sam, but you're very close to your mom. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, you know, your mom loves you so much, so much, no matter what you do, she's still going to forgive you and love you. But, but that, that, that doesn't mean that you can just now do whatever you want and hurt her right, over and right. over and over again. I think it's kind um, of like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the Bible addresses that the same question. And Paul had to write a chapter on it because the people in the church was saying, so if God is so good, then I might just sin so that I might be forgiven more. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the same argument that, that Paul actually wrote in Romans. verse. He said, what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in our own house there? Or don't you realize we packed up and left there for good? That is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into the new country of grace, a new life, a new land. So it's a choice that we're making now that, God, my allegiance is to you. I'm a Christian. And and so I'll follow your will and I will live under your grace, which means I cannot do this on my own. I need your help because on my own, I'll be left in my sinful ways. But now I'm under you. I know I have the grace to overcome whatever sin so I can say no to sin. And, and I think that's how God's transforming love changes us. Diba? Hindi naman out of fear. Eh. Diba? And, and we grew up that way. Oh, if you do this, huh, you'll go to hell. Mm-hmm. No, the woman will get you, right? Or the demon will get you. And so we're all afraid all the time because it was a narrative of fear rather than a narrative of hope and transformation and of love. And Paul now... Oh, brother up- Dennis, ano, naalala ko lang, sorry to interrupt you. Yung, oh, pag bad ka, bibigay ito sa Bombay. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, naalala ko yun. Basta kay Uncle Sam YG, okay ako. Oo, oh, diba? <clears throat> When the Bumbay passes, they tell the kids, I don't know what I did, but oh, if you misbehave, I'll give it to the Indian guy. I don't want your kid. Why you give me your kid? I'm not gonna do that. It goes against the very heart of the gospel, which is, dahil sa love ni God, I'm transformed. I'm not fearful. That's why your question was out of a narrative of, Yun yung na- nakasanayan eh. We grew up with that. Oh, if you don't follow Jesus, you'll go to hell. Ah. Oh, mm-hmm. if you watch this, you'll go to ano. Ah. If you listen to ano, di ba? Mm-hmm. To rock and roll, you'll go to hell. Di ba? So, that's always the narrative. And so, ang tingin natin kay Lord, He's a God of all law, Ten Commandments, rules, but never fun. But God wants us to have fun and find joy in the midst of pain and even in crisis. There's joy because we are in Christ. My goodness, we don't have much time left and we have a couple more questions to go. All of them super interesting. So I'm just going to go boom, boom, boom now from here. Is that cool? Oh, cool? This next question is very interesting. Sam wants to know, do you think God created social media? What is his role in all of these technological advances, you think? Oh, it's not like Facebook. Para may direct access tayo. Where are you? Like, kasi, diba, when you receive a private message from the Lord, that's not so where are you hear na me. Diba, tatakot ka. Makukuha na ba ako ni Lord? Diba? <laughs> yeah, what do you think, guys? Well, social media is not bad. It's a tool. Social media is like money. It's not good or bad. It's up to you how you use it. The moment that we ban social media... We're we're like a communist country that one person decides what good is what's good and bad. And that's why we have spiritual leaders to lead us to what's good. For example, the, the narrow door, um, we're using social media. We're, we're so using social media to inspire people. Kami, I I have a heavy social media traction because you know it's free. Mm-hmm. I can remind people that life is good through Twitter or Instagram or, or YouTube. I don't have the same platform as Sam YG or Sam O, but because of Sam O, you know, opening her mind, being open-minded siya about all of these things, we're able to use social media as as uh, to distribute 
inspiring messages of, of good, godly messages. So that's that's my take on social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same take. Sabi ko na eh. Oh. It's Dr. Harold, what do you think? Oh, you're on mute. It's Dr. Harold. Line of the year yan eh. Alin? Like, you're on mute. Okay. <laughs> oh. Tama. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. So, uh, we believe that social media is created by men, but it happened because it's according to God's will or God's plan. Um, I believe my brothers here and Sam O will be uh, familiar, and even our listeners, when I've mentioned a few times in our previous episodes that uh, the way we understand the Bible, there are four contents. Uh, that we can find here. There are um, history, the moral teachings, the prophecy, and fulfillment, meaning there are plans of God that we can see in the Bible. And uh, what is his plan in the Bible? It's to spread this word so that the gospel will be preached to all the nations, even to the ends of the earth. And the way we see things going right now, the social media is a tool, like what Brother Shapel mentioned, or a medium for us to be able to share the word of God. And that's why Um, When we look at it on that perspective, we know that God would want the people to receive his word. And figuratively, this word can pertain to the seed that I usually mention in in this podcast. Because there will come a time that God promised that he will be gathering the people through his word. And when we gather together, um, since we receive his seed, um, the Bible calls it a harvest. And that's why... The way we believe it, uh, this technolo- uh, technological advance, uh, advancement that we can see online, um, this is being used by God to share His Word, to spread the, the gospel. But we have to be careful because His enemy is also using this to spread lies, um, false accusations, or even to cause divisions among groups, peoples. And um, that's why whenever we go online in social media, we have to be careful to distinguish, is this really still coming from God or not. And that's why we have to be um, very responsible um, um, when we go to the online, um, when we go online. Amen. Right, right. Yeah. And I think that's where the question comes from, because, you know, social media in itself is neither good or bad. But the way we encounter social media, I think we see a lot of, uh, it brings out the worst in us, maybe. You know, it's a lot about vanity. And it's about, yeah, there's a lot of, of false information that gets spread so quickly because that, that's just how the internet works. And so I guess sometimes you get to thinking like, okay, if God is in control and we believe he is, then how come these things are happening? Is this God's idea? Um, but yeah, I, I think, yeah, because he's in control, he can also use these things to, you know, do his plan. But I guess, plan. Sam, uh, even in the Bible, in the New Testament, there were fake news. Mm-hmm. And that's why St. Paul was really mad a lot of times about it. So mm-hmm. it's actually everyone saying social media is bad. No, it's a human condition. It's a human problem that is just being magnified by social media. Yeah. It's a social dilemma. I agree. <laughs> social dilemma, the documentary. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're not sponsored, but if you guys, Netflix, you want to sponsor us, we're open minded. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's move on to our next question. We got a couple more. Okay, Sam wants to know, is it true that nobody wants to be priests anymore because the younger generations aren't as faithful or religious? I feel like this is maybe for Brother J. Paul. What is the situation with the priests? Do we have any, yeah, do we have many of them wanting to be priests? Actually, I was, I was, this was my mindset for a long time until I found out that Catholicism is growing fast all over the world. And the thing is, why are we having fallouts? And this is where the Catholic tradition or religion um, has made a lot of mistakes. We've forced people to be Catholic. And if you don't be, I'm sure you've experienced it in one way or another. And that's why there's a severe fallout. Um, And we're trying, especially because of Pope Francis. He's really from John Paul to Pope Francis, is really trying to make the world understand that the church should be an inclusive church. 
But I was surprised when I found out this um, study, especially that China and India will be the most Christian and Catholic countries in the world. Yeah. They'll be producing the priests, missionaries, nuns because of experiencing oppression. I think Pastor Dennis and I talked about this a few years ago when I was in his office. That That's how Christianity grew. When they were being oppressed by the Romans, every time there's oppression, Christianity grows. For example, also in the feast, our feast in the Middle East, because some of them are behind closed doors, their growth is severely fast. And 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 also in 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 China and and I can I'll have to be quiet in in countries that uh, are 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 not not um, open minded with with it. So surprise. <laughs> So basically, it's not true is what you're saying, that there is a decreasing number of people that want to be priests. I, I guess there is a decreasing number of be, people being forced to be priests. Mm. Or now people have more choice to and taking charge of their life. What kind of life do I want? And, and, and really asking questions. Mm. You know, actually, I think I can extend this also to like, oh, sorry, I was going to ask also Pastor Dennis, like, what about pastors? You know, are there less people who want to be pastors now? But Instructor Harold, you wanted to say something? I don't know. Um, you can let uh, Pastor D answer the question. Yeah. yeah Pastor I think now, especially with the crisis, I think the landscape has changed. Uh, we don't need paid pastors. We can have a lot of volunteer ministers. Uh, we call it lay, lay people, right, in church, lay leaders in church. And I think that's how the church was designed. It's got to be run by lay leaders and a few paid pastors, you know. Uh, like for Victory, it's like point, not even 1% would be paid staff for Victory, for the whole Victory. So it's run by volunteers. It's not run by pastors. No, it's not run by professionals, right? And I think that's the way it should go. Uh, we need more people who would volunteer, Right, Sam, you're a volunteer now in your church, right? And uh, the influence that you give might be f far bigger than than a priest, right? Because of your network and because of your platform that God has given you. And I think we need to see more of that. Mm. We're done. Dr. So, Harold, yes. Yes, if I can just add something to what we are um, um, talking about right now, because initially when I received the, the question, it talks about the, the, the priest. And uh, the first thing that usually that would come into our mind is that this is something pertaining to the, just the Catholic Church. But actually, this is the will of God for us. Um, in Exodus chapter 19, um, verses 5 to 6, uh, God was speaking with Moses and he told Moses that you have to tell the Israelites that if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So God's will is for us to become priests. But how do we define priest? In the Bible, in Malachi chapter 2, it defines priests as uh, messengers of God who have the true instructions of God and that no false was found in their lips. And that's why people would usually go to them and ask for instructions or guidelines, uh, or I mean um, guidance. And uh, um, the way we look at that definition, we can apply it to what uh, Moses did. We know at the tabernacle, Moses is the high priest. And Aaron and the Levites are considered as priests who are working in the tabernacle. But basically, they also have the word of God and they guide the people through through the word that they received and it, it passed it passed down through generation and that's why uh, approximately 2000 years ago there were pharisees who are very knowledgeable of the bible there were teachers of the law and their role is like that of a priest but we know that they became corrupt and that's why um, god had to send his only son jesus who had the word of truth and that's why he had to preach it to the people during that time and that's why we can also say that Jesus now become the true high priest during that time. And those people who are following him and who had the word of God, just like the disciples, we can consider them as priests as well because they have the word of God and they are able to share it to other people. And again, this was passed down to generations after generations. And that's why until right now, we have pastors, we have priests who are actually the ones who first uh, maintain their life of faith 
And that's why we are grateful to them because through them, we are also able to keep our life of faith. And um, this definition of priest that we can find in the Bible, I think extends to us that we should have that kind of desire to also know the word of God and then be able to share it to other people. Wow, we got more than we bargained for there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good though. Yeah. What do you think, Sam? Well, I I, I kind of get also, I think it's really a, you know, uh, situational uh, thing. I'm, I'm just coming from the idea and parang, you know, everybody's, uh, parang it's not, it, it's not as a priority as it was before. Na, you know, you'd hear people say, oh, I want to be a priest. I want to be a priest. I don't hear that as much. That's why actually uh, that led me to, you know, ask that question. But yeah, great insights all over. Thanks, yeah. Sam. Yeah, it's, um, I guess, you know, in 2020, this lifestyle of a priest, you know, that has to d devote his life now to the service of the church and having to be oh. celibate and, you know, just yeah. like so, so much sacrifice involved in being a priest. And so I think maybe it's becoming like less appealing mm. to a lot of people to choose um, this, this vocation. Like I haven't, I can't remember the last time when I heard somebody say, oh, I want to be a priest. <laughs> No, yeah. but not, not like when I was in probably elementary or high school. Oh, you know, you'd hear it, you know, every every so often. Oh, it's Egan, yeah, and he wants to be a priest. I, I can't remember the last time I heard somebody saying, oh, you know what? I want to be a priest. That's why it yeah. actually led me to ask that question. Yeah, yeah. It's a calling for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We're done for our last question, guys. Um, yeah, Sam, you brought some really good questions, by the way. Really interesting. Sam yeah. wants yeah. to know, uh -uh, if you don't read the Bible, you don't go to Mass. Or worship service um are you then less of a catholic or a christian even if you are a good person in essence thoughts dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, non -practicing, in essence good ka naman, pero you know you don't i guess we might, Peter, Sam, i think we might have different answers uh but i'll be giving a very uh catholic answer um, the Bible is good, but you, but we've realized I hope that you are bad. <laughs> but a lot of people don't become Christian because, me, oh, sorry, a lot of men don't become Christian because number one, they don't like to read, mm -hmm. not because they don't love God, but because they don't love to read. So everywhere, even in the states, pastors and and are. Are, are figuring out how to bring the word, the word, the message of God to those who don't read, to make it experiential, etc. Um, it will not make you a bad person. Number one thing is we have to first go to the love of God, that God loves you first so much. But also, sorry, not but, but then also we go to what, Pope Francis is saying in his uh, Evangelii Gaudium, it says, yung, yung Eucharist, yung, yung gift ni Lord, that is not, it is a vitamin for sinners. So basically what church mm -hmm. is, it's not for perfect people, as, as you know, maraming, is, maraming naman dyang stories in the Bible. But the church is for the broken and the lost who want a better life. If you're perfect, okay, don't go to church. If you have everything, then don't go to church. Ni mo na kailangan church because the, the, the church is for the least and the lost and those who are clinging for something more in life. Um, but I guess you can't, parang in, uh, sa love life. Hindi yeah, pwedeng, pa na, pa na hindi Sige. pwedeng mahalin mo lang galingan yung mo. Galingan mo, galingan mo. Oh. Oh, ah, kailangan mahalin mo yung buong parts. Mm -hmm. Lahat, lahat ng parts sa girl. Mm -hmm. And, and and, and it's in the Bible that God is the head of Jesus is the head of the church, and the body of Christ is the church. So you can't only have the head, you can't only have the hip on hey, the hip on the body. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> 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 yung voice night out energy oh. lumalabas. <laughs> hip on issues. Anyway. I-mute nyo na lang ako. I-edit <laughs> um, natin yun. Sino mag-edit nito? Pakialis yung hipon part. Ha? Thank you. <laughs> no, but, di ba? Parang hindi pwedeng ulo lang. Uh, hindi hmm. pwedeng katawan lang. In, in life, you have to have the whole you 
be be loved. So so God, it starts with loving God and being loved by God, and then slowly, God is calling you to be part of His church. It may take years, it may take decades, but ultimately God wants to be with you because He loves you. With Christianity in general, is we think that Jesus came into the world to make bad people good. Like we think the Bible is just a moral book. No? I don't want to read the Bible, I might burn. I don't want to go to church. Because we always come with the perspective that Jesus came to make bad people good. But he did not. He came into the world to make dead yeah. people live. And scripture is so clear that throughout, throughout Genesis, down to Revelation, he who has Jesus has life. He who does not have Jesus does not have life. What he's saying is not the life that the world offers. No. But it's the life that there will come a point in a person's life where he would feel, even when he's in the top of the world, is this all there is to life, right? And I think this is where Jesus comes in, right? Because if it's all about just making bad people good, then I could, you know, I could be one of the Pharisees today saying, you know, I've been so good. Pastor pa nga ako, di ba? Hindi tulad yun, hindi nagpastor, di ba? Si J. Paul, peace builder, hindi father. So mas, ma- mas mababa ang ano, di ba? Ganun ang magiging perspective natin. If it's all about how good, how good could you be, right? And I think there's nothing, even the ten, kahit pin mo na yung ten commandment, binas mo na yung Bible, if it's coming from a lens that it's just a moral book, it's not going to transform you. That's why the Bible tells us, do not look at the letter, the law, the spirit. The spirit is that it's telling us without Christ, you can't be transformed. People cannot change themselves on their own. And we've seen that in the world today. Kahit anong sabi natin, Black Lives Matter, or, you know, change is coming. It's still the same world we live in. It's still a very sinful world. Until we recognize, I can't do this on my own. I need the Savior. I need Christ. And that's what Christianity is. It's saying, I surrender to you, God, because on my own, I cannot save myself. I cannot be my own God. It's going to mess up the whole world if I'm my own God. And so I make you God. And, and when you look at in the sense about new scripture it's it's a book that tells me of my need of a savior and how the savior loves me so much in spite of my sin Romans 5 we will say Christ died for us if it's coming from that lens it transforms me diba? and I think the reason and let me give a, a marriage illustration no the reason I'm still married to the same girl is because with all of my mess up decisions she chose to stick with me. And I think that's God. No, I think that's how God is. God is the good and bad. He knows how sinful we are, yet He loves us so much. Sa Bible kasi dyan mo makita, you are fully known by God. Sam YG and Sam OH, you know, we might not know everything about your life, guys. We won't know the private things that you do. Only God knows, right? And God knows it. He fully knows you, yet He fully loves you. That's the message of the scripture. That's the message of the gospel. And that's why he tells us to come to him. Come, let us reason together. Though your sin may be as a garland, it's quite a little. So he's inviting us to come to a relationship with him. And I think that's the whole scripture for you. Right. I know you have to go, Sam. Two minutes. Mm. Let's just hear what Instructor Harold has to say. Two minutes. Go, go, go. Can you do that, Instructor Harold? Okay. Yes, time starts now <laughs> but yeah. to answer. Basically, the reason why we are studying the Bible or reading the Bible and the reason why we go to Mass or the service is because we know that this is our way to keep our life of faith. And that's why it's important for us to always give our proper worship to God. So if we're not doing this, we feel like we are bad. We're like a bad person. But in the Bible, we know that there are um, different standards of being good um, because in the standard of God, it's different from the standard of man. Man, it's objective. Um, I mean, subjective. It changes. But the standard of God, it's objective. And it is something that does not change, just like the truth. And speaking of the truth, we know that Jesus is the truth. He said that I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But um, during that time, um, when he came in this world, we know that, he, that his actions are not that good in the eyes of man because he flipped the tables in the temple. He even... A work during the Sabbath, wherein it's very 
unlawful during that time. And the way we look at it, even though it's not that good in the eyes of man, but in the standards of God, we can say that what he did is good. But um, the reason why we have to understand the Bible is because we would want to make sure that what we're doing is pleasing to God. If it's not pleasing to God, then God is giving us the chance. I think this is what I'm trying to say earlier. When we have to repent, it's not only through our words, but true repentance should always show in our actions as well. Okay. All right. Sam, um, final thoughts. Having heard you know, from our panel and having had this discussion, what do you think? Well, you know, it's super uh, insightful for me because I've always had the, you know these questions at the back of my head. And it's nice to shed light on them because sometimes you just, you know, um, have these thoughts and just find your own answers to these questions. So it's always good to discuss these things with people who, you know, to also get everybody's opinion on, on you know, these questions. Because even, of course, we're, we try to be as faithful as we, faithful as we can, we're always going to have these questions at the back of our head. And damning why? Why this? Why that? Why this? Diba? If, if God is good, bakit ganito? Bakit may ganyan? Diba? So I, I really, you know, I appreciate the insights that everybody uh, gave today. I appreciate Not- you. I appreciate you coming and having this conversation. I kind of feel like, gosh, this was kind of like challenging for you to sit through like, you know, serious. Oh, no, 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 not really. Not really. I hope I... Thanks for of indulging course. me. Aside from Boys Night Out, I mean, I, I do. I, of course, it's Kalokohan on air because that's the character that we have to, you know, play with when uh, we do our radio show. But of course, you know, off air, a lot of... Serioso naman ang tao, hindi lang ako sineserioso. So what is this other show that you're running to? Tell us what's happening. Oh, no. um, I host a show for Lazada every Friday. It's a game show. It's live. Oh, oh my so, gosh. Yeah, so it's 12 noon. Um, so we I, I log on at 11 to set up the backdrop and the cameras and all that stuff. So it's every Friday till Christmas. Um, it's on Lazada. You can catch me on Boys Night Out as well. Mondays to Thursdays, 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, yeah, and I'm just, you know. The podcast. Pahal- Podcast. It's Lech and Pag-ibig to. It's on Spotify. Check it out. If it's we're on our fifth episode, palam. So, yeah, a lot of things happening here and there. I'm, I'm just you know on social media as well. Underscore Sam YG. You guys feel free to drop me a line or whatever, and I try to reply to everyone. Happy for you, Sam. Happy for thanks you, brother. For you guys. Yeah, thanks for being here. And um, thank you. Yeah, we look forward thank to you, seeing Sam. you in all of these shows. And um, thanks for joining us today. Have a good show. Thank you. Stay safe, guys. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. In conversation again with Sam. You know, again, like I said, I've known Sam um, for quite some time now, but I this is a new side of him that I saw, and I wish he was able to stick around just a little longer um, because I also wanted to tell him because in that last question about like you know not reading Bible, not attending Mass, like does that make me less of a Catholic? And then um, we, you know when I'm a good person, like I actually thought about my dad a lot because because like through our conversations we always talk about like god being our father like that is the way we relate to him and so when i was thinking about that you know my dad and i like our thing is to like go out to eat right my dad watches our podcast by the way so like hi dad and uh he doesn't he doesn't talk much like he's such a quintessential you know korean dude like that but I know what he likes. And so when we go out to eat, I know to take him to a Japanese restaurant. I know to get him sashimi and I know to get him a hot sake, right? And so this is how I show him that, you know, I love him. And these things that we are asked to do, I think, as people in the faith, is kind of like that. We know that God, he doesn't need anything from us, but this is how we show him our faith and our love. We go to mass. This is our duty, right? We try and read the Bible and get to know him. Um, And I think Brother J. Paul always tells me to like preach it when I start talking. No, but really like this was a personal reflection of mine. Um, And we don't, yeah, he doesn't need any of these things. But I think it's about showing him um, the proper, like that's the proper relationship, I think. And I think living this faith life is figuring that out. Like what is the right proper relationship that I should have with God. And the amazing thing is the more you do this stuff, like it bears fruit for me. It's not even for God. So 
yeah, that's what I was kind of reflecting on on that last question. But anyway, there you go. That was Sam YG. Sam absolutely has a serious side. And I think that was really refreshing to see um, and have this conversation with Sam YG. Catch him. He's got so much going on. And our panel has a lot going on as well. Pastor D, what is the update with your podcast, Our Parenthood? Oh, yeah. Yes, our parenthood is going to premiere on November 17. Oh, we have wow. a date. Yes. Nice. So we pre-recorded our first few episodes already. So hope you could join us. Join me and Tammy as we talk about parenting, marriage, and life community. Very nice. Uh, Brother J. Paul, how is the J. Paul Hernandez podcast going? Doing good. We're I'm thinking of, ref I'm reflecting if doing two episodes a week. So I think we're gaining mm -hmm. traction or enjoying. Yeah. Nice. Thanks, nice. Yeah. Instructor Harold, anything new going on? What's up with you guys? Um, something new is uh, our worship service that we're doing online and it's open for everyone. So we want to continue to invite you and join us every Sunday, 10 a.m. Um, if you want to send us a message, um, you can find me on Facebook, Harry Resho, Instagram, Harry Resho, and yeah, <laughs> love life. <laughs> love life. Oh, that's, yeah, that was, anyway, yes, all of the details on where you can find our panel, I'm going to put it down in the show description so you can check that out. We have an email address, the narrow door podcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye guys. <laughs>